Welcome to another episode of Sport Talk, a show where we have the opportunity to sit down with various student athletes at Hood College and discuss their experience with the recruiting process, as well as the transition between high school and college athletics. I'm your host, Scott Kiwi. He is a graduate from, from Cosby High School located in Richmond, Virginia. He had the opportunity to play club soccer with the Richmond Kickers Elite. He served as a team captain and helped lead the team to a Castle Showcase tournament win and a state cup run. Please welcome freshman soccer player, Paul Hagen. Paul. Scott. Thanks for coming on the show today. No problem, glad to be here. Happy to have you. When did you first start playing soccer? I started playing probably around age six, right after the end of my kindergarten year. I picked up baseball for about a year. I just, I, I didn't like it. My hand-eye coordination wasn't really there. So I start, I picked up soccer and I haven't looked back. Did you play with a bunch of your friends like right from the start? Yeah, so a lot of my friends, like that was a pretty big sport around where I was. We had this team called like the MYSL, like Thunder or something like that. And we played on that team until we were like 10 or 11. And that's when like we all started getting competitive and serious with it. Growing up, did you have the opportunity to play indoor soccer as well? I did. There's a cool place called Rise and there's another nice place near me called Own Touch. One specializes in futsal and one specializes in indoor soccer. So I was really blessed to have both opportunities nearby. Your coaches when you were younger, what was it that kind of gave you that confidence to kind of continue playing soccer throughout your, your childhood as well as obviously your young adulthood? Um, so I had a lot of coaches when I was younger and then I got really lucky and I was able to settle in with one coach named Chuck Johnson and he really inspired me to just want to keep playing and keep grinding. Uh, our team name, it, stupid as it sounds, we were called the Honey Badgers and like it was like, like grind, 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 like don't quit, like you never stop. And he just made me fall in love with the game more and more every season and he was actually the one who inspired me to go out for a higher level travel team and then just keep going up and up and through the ranks even after I left his team. When you got into your club team, talk to me about the tryouts that you had to go through. So I first went to travel, I started to travel really late and I first tried out for a team called FC Richmond and I went out for them at the end of my freshman year of high school. And so there was probably about 40 or 50 kids going out for that team and they were, it was kind of like you kind of knew who was on the team already and yeah. they had like spots for two or three new kids and when you went out like if you got put to one side then you were on the team if you got put to the other side you were off the team and originally i was put to the side that was off the team and that kind of like i was like i'm not i'm not giving up for this so i kind of got lucky and had a crazy rest of the tryout and was able to play up on that team i ended up making the team and then the year after that um i decided i wasn't happy with fc's program so i ended up leaving their program and I went to the club that I stayed with for the rest of my high school career, uh, the Richmond Kickers Elite Program. And I had never played on an elite team and usually if you're trying to walk onto an elite team, you're gonna get cut and you're not gonna make it. I was one of, there, there was about 70 kids trying out for that team for a roster of 18 and the team already had 15 kids on it. So I got really lucky, I had a really good tryout and I was one of three kids who weren't on the team who was offered a contract at the end of the at the end of the week. What was that feeling like when you found out that you made that team, that you had the opportunity to be a part of that? It was honestly pure ecstasy because I knew like there was a lot of people who were telling me like don't waste your time, you're not gonna make it, don't waste your time, you're not gonna make it. And like just being able to like like get that offer, sign that contract, like best feeling in the world. How do you think that elite team prepared you for the rest of your soccer career leading up to now? So I'm gonna be honest, my first my first few weeks being on that team, I was way out of my league. Like I was not ready for that skill level. And it honestly, hit you like a rock. Yeah, yeah. Being on that kind of team like forced me to up my game. And like that, like we ended up like that ended up up in my game enough that I was able to get invited to like elite academies and ID camps. And I ended up by my senior year winning the captainship on the team and being one of the captains of the team. So I definitely say being on that team and like, I was definitely thrown into the deep end and like without knowing how to swim and it kind of was sink or swim. And I got lucky enough that I, I just had, I, I was determined enough to want it that I was able to keep playing and up my level until I was able to match the level that I was playing at and then surpass that level and keep going. That's excellent. So 
now talk to me about the tournaments talk to me about kind of the recruiting process where did that all kind of come about so i started getting recruited my sophomore year and according to ncaa you can't be officially contacted right. for soccer and so soccer is really weird you're allowed to go to these id camps as a freshman sophomore junior or senior but they can't reach out to you outside of the id camps so coaches who are interested in you have to come up to you during the id camps and that's when i started getting recruited like they'd come up and talk to you and be like hey, like, we know we can't talk to you outside, but y'all are allowed to reach out to us. Reach out to us, we're interested. And so I went to a lot of ID camps as a, as a sophomore and junior, and I also went to, like, my team was invited to a lot of different showcases, and showcases where you have hundreds of colleges there just kind of watching you and, like, spectating, and they want to know who's who. Like, that's where they find their recruits. And I was actually discovered, like, by Hood. Hood discovered me at the University of Mary Washington's ID camp, which is a few hours south from here. And I was a junior in high school, and I'd never even heard of Hood. And they reached out to me and said, hey, we're interested, we saw you play, send us your schedule. And that's usually what happens. Like, they'll see you in ID camp or a showcase, and like, they'll get interested. They'll reach out to you, give them your number, say they're interested, then they'll ask for film, and then they'll ask for your game schedule. And like, honestly, you usually don't know when they're gonna show up. So you gotta treat, once you send out your game schedule to the coach, you gotta treat every single game like a coach is coming to watch. For sure. When you finally came back or came to Hood, what kind of drew you in? What was that big draw in? So I was really blessed. I got to do an overnighter here and I got to meet a lot of the team. And there was just a different feeling here. It was like a feeling like camaraderie and like brotherhood here. Like, it, like I've been on teams where there's not like that feeling and like it felt like everyone here wanted like they wanted to win and they wanted to keep grinding and get to that next level and like everyone there was going to support you and you were growing and getting better together and the coaching staff here is excellent like the coach staff here is amazing they want what's best for you and I mean they're going to be hard on you but it helps you grow and just like Hood has that general feeling of just yeah. like you belong and like they're really good like, there's no team that's going to, like, ostracize you or kind of, like, pick you out. Like, it's really, really – it's just a feeling you don't find on many teams. When you came to Hood, you obviously came. Soccer was a big part of why you came. Was there anything other than soccer that kind of really drew you in uh, on the campus or something around the campus that you really enjoyed, places so, around the campus? I – like, I really liked downtown Frederick. I liked how close we were to downtown Frederick, but, like, having the school, like, so I'm from Richmond, so I'm really close to VCU, and, like, seeing VCU as the city of Richmond, like, as the campus, it's just so chaotic. So I liked coming here and seeing, like, the campus was enclosed, and, like, everything's really tight-knit, but we also have downtown nearby, so you don't have to walk through downtown to get to classes, but, like, you can still go downtown and, like, view everything downtown has to offer, and it's right there. And the campus itself, I came in spring, and during spring, like, everything here is beautiful. Freshman year, you go to your first practice. <laughs> Run me through what was going through your mind first coll collegiate practice. I had a rough first practice. Um, we had, it was our first day of preseason, and we had just done fitness. Like, we'd done the Man U, which is a crazy <laughs> fitness test. That's yeah. awful. So we were doing our first 11 v 11, and... I get put on the field and it's my first touch on the ball ever in college and I have a breakaway down the line and the first thing that happens is senior goalkeeper Danny Castillo comes out and launches me. <laughs> like I I tried to flick the ball by him and he's huge and I kind of flicked it by him and he kind of got a foot on it and then his entire body just went into me and I went flying. I couldn't walk for the next like 10-15 minutes and Danny just looked at me and was like, Welcome to welcome. college. Yeah. <laughs> like, welcome to college. So it was definitely like it, it was it, it was a huge learning curve, the physicality, and but I was extremely blessed. Like all of us freshmen, like we kind of learned together, and we we were able to grow together, and we grew as a team through it. So it's not like any one player was dominating. Like no one was like gonna like call you out if you weren't at that level yet, because they understand and they're gonna try and help you get up to that level so you can function better as a team. What was your favorite game of this season? Um, honestly, there's a few. I, I do think St. Vincent, our senior night, was probably one of my favorite games. I, um, saying goodbye to the seniors was really hard. 
that was that was that's emotional like seeing them all walk out and hearing like their past four years there like you're like wow like they're actually leaving and then I actually got to record my first assist as a college kid so that meant a lot to me I got to do it in front of my family like that was one of the first games my family was able to come up and see so that meant a lot to me like having my family come up and some of my family had never seen me play before so they got to see me play for the first time ever in college and like I get an assist to a se- uh, Elaine who's a senior winger on the team so that meant a lot to me and then I think another favorite game, we didn't end up winning, but it was against Messiah. And they were one of the top, I think like they were number 14 in the nation at the time. And we ended up, we almost pulled off the upset. We held them tied 2-2 until like the 80th minute. And that was one of the craziest games I've ever played in. I, I didn't even play much of the game. I played maybe 15, 20 minutes. And that was the most intense game I ever played. So, And every single person who played that game like gave everything they had. That was probably one of the most dedicated performances we had all season. And it just like even after the game, like we didn't like we ended up giving up a goal late and that ended up sealing like we didn't win. But like just like that performance against like a team that was expecting to come in and just blow us away, like we all stepped up and we like everyone was happy because we had literally just competed with one of the best teams in the nation. How last season will you grow to next season as a team? I think um we definitely, we're going to be a younger team next season, and I think that's going to make us hungry. So I definitely think going into next season, we really want, like, I know speaking for myself personally, and I think I can speak for a lot of the other people who are staying with the team, we want to get into the conference playoffs. We want the playoffs, we want the title, and we want to go to the NCAA tournament. So I think we're going to be hungry, and, like, we all want it. And we want to do it for the seniors who aren't coming back. Like, we want them to come back and be able to be proud of, like, what they left and what what like how they inspired us to keep going we want them to be proud of what like the legacy they left and how we're holding it on like carrying it on we definitely are going to try and we we want to be undefeated it, it's probably not going to happen but we i know for a fact we're hungry and we want to make playoffs so we're going to do everything in our power to go as far as we can it's fantastic to hear Moving away from soccer just a little bit, what are you looking to major in? I know you're a freshman, but you know you kind of think about that sometimes. Yeah, I'm looking at a finance major right now. So I, I do really like numbers, like that sounds weird, but um, I'm looking into majoring in finance, maybe something related to stocks, but definitely something either finance or economics. And what would be your dream job after leaving school with Honestly, that? a dream job probably if I could get CFO position at a Fortune 500 company or end up as a stock trader on Wall Street, I mean, those two would be probably a dream job. That'd be excellent. That would be crazy. You'll be making that money for sure. <laughs> if there's one word to describe your team from this past season, how would you describe them? <sighs> That's hard. That's a hard one. But, I mean, there's a lot of words I'd use to describe it. Like, we're hardworking, we're a brotherhood, but... The one word that pops to mind with this team is is family. You fight to the last drop. Like you fight to the last like I don't know if you've ever seen like the last like the movie Red Tails, but like it just every time you're in that huddle and like everyone's hyping up and you're trying to turn up, it's just like like you're thinking to the last like to the last drop of sweat, to the last drop of blood, like we're gonna fight. Like there's nothing in our way. If you want it, go get it. So I definitely say we're a tight knit group and we, we always have each other's backs. It, it feels like a family. That's awesome to hear. I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys do next season. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, Scott. No problem. Glad I could come on. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Sport Talk. I want to take the time again to thank my guest, Paul Hagen, for coming out to the show. Until next time, I'm your host, Scott Kiwi. This has been another episode of Sport Talk.